Hey, beautiful people. It still always blows my mind that there are actually people out there in the world who do not want equality for other human beings and who purposely want to see themselves as better than others based on what piece of land that they were born on. Not only that, they believe that ideology gives them a right to kill other human beings for that same reason. The reality is we're all born equal, none greater, none less. And these same people will hate those over there and blame their religion whilst it is their politics that is actually doing this, where it takes aside the side of the one believing himself to be better than everyone else. The thing is, if we ever went to war with, say, Russia, they will be sending your children out there. They will be sending you out to fight for your country. You would not be seen as anything special. You would just be another fighter that should fight for your country and they need to keep you in fear so that you believe that you are special and that you can go out there and beat these people. It's just absolutely crazy if you can actually think that that's real. Politics is no worse than any religion for wars in its regions. And these days, politicians use religion to create those wars in those regions. They lie to you about Islam in particular. Now I've been studying all of this and I learned about it and I'm reading so much and I listen to the Quran every day. And I have decided that so much after reading these things that I wanted to become a Muslim. I've noticed that the word anti-Semitism is being used again as an agenda as we have, uh, as we all head to the polls. Awful people such as Margaret Hodge and Peter Mandelson have been seen out and about in Islington North to ensure Corbyn doesn't get elected as an independent. Their criticism of uh, Jeremy Corbyn for not being supportive of Israel is what they say is anti-Semitism and this is all being flung at us again and it's always done when something is going on you can see that they've got an agenda they need to make people seem to be bad, the bad guys especially the ones that are absolutely the opposite of that and for our leaders, such as Keir Starmer, who's about to become the British Prime Minister, heaven forbid. Um, I hope to God, you know, at the very least, he has a hung parliament or a very low majority because he really, we really need to teach him. He cannot win the way that he's been doing things and the way that things are going. He's almost saying, well, I'm going to be a Tory um, and put things right by being a Tory. But... <laughs> We've had all these years of Tory behaviour and actions and it's look at it, the state of it. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Um, uh, meanwhile, the word peace is not once coming out of that man's mouth. You don't see him speak about peace at all. Um, it's not a word that ever gets said. The word peace is made out to be a treacherous word and that you're a loony lefty if you use it. Someone who thinks peace can be achieved, the only reason it can be is they will never give, uh, it can't be, is because they will never give peace a chance. Just look at how they treated George Galloway for speaking the truth all those years ago and look how they treated Jeremy Corbyn. If you speak about peace, there's something wrong with you, they say. That's what they really believe. You're naive, you're stupid, there's something wrong with you. Starmer's misuse of the word anti-Semitism is coming back to label this innocent man. And that's vile to me. I remember when George Galloway had the decency to apologise for his error of judgment calling David Badil and vile Israel supporter in response to being labelled an anti-Semite. But he was right and he told his truth. But as politics forces everyone to apologise for their honesty, this is where everything is going wrong. Nobody can be honest anymore. What is politics without honesty? 
All of this is why I stand with the Workers' Party and George Galloway, and it's up to all of us to challenge racist narratives, either on the internet or amongst our acquaintances. We have a responsibility not to allow racist language, whether implicit or explicit, to flourish. But it is true, why is anyone apologising for being honest? It's madness. I've seen articles in the Daily Mail um, stating that Jeremy Corbyn was in a group with clear anti-Semites. We've seen all of these in the past that have come up. Um, made by David Collier, who uh, is Nasha Jew, um, a clear anti-Semite in the correct terms, because Palestinians are Semites. David Collier was referred to uh, referred to Palestinians as filthy pigs and has wished for them all to be dead in the same blog. He can be seen with his megaphone at pro-Palestine marches and campaigns. He's a disgusting racist. And anyone quoting him or following him needs to look at what he writes and he's just not somebody you want to be associated with at all. And remember the newspapers calling Corbyn a Russian spy, all of these things are crazy and they want to bring all of this stuff back up again just to, dis, uh, dis, uh, to make him look bad so that you won't vote for him. It's, they knew that at some point though, the, the Israelis knew, the world knew, America knew, the UK knew that at some point Hamas would have responded to the wicked treatment of the Palestinian people. For goodness sake, they were treated appallingly before October the 7th. Their children were being tortured in their jails. They were going to respond eventually and they knew it. But worse than that, they knew when it was going to happen at all. And we know there were suitcases of money through going through Qatar to um, to Hamas. And they knew that there was going to be a festival on on October the 7th. And they let that go ahead, knowing that this was probably going to happen that day and knowing that they um, and when they triggered, triggered the Hannibal Directive, knowing that they were killing many of their own, knowing that they were going to, um, you know, blame Hamas for it all. They haven't got away with that, have they? I mean, they've killed all of these people now, but they haven't won't get away with it. They cannot get away with it and we cannot let them. We need to check our sources before backing lies and support those racist agendas that just make Corbyn look bad. And, um, and it's interesting to see how the phase anti-Semitic is raising up again, almost exclusively pertaining to, to Israel. Um, and the word Semitic encompasses the Palestinians and the Arabs, a much wider range of people from the Middle East, always other than just the Jews. So in discussions, nobody seems to maintain that it's not exclusively describing the Jews and we need to have that conversation. Under the context, anti-Semitism must always be repugnant, but in today's world, we need to be able to differentiate the anti-Semitism crisis and criticism of Israel. Governments, political policies, all democratic governments should be open to criticism of course, also needs to be fair and balanced. Now, I've always made videos before criticising Israel's policies and I've been threatened and Israel uh, and labelled with the word, but it's right to be critical of something that is abusive and I will exercise my rights to do so, which is why I'm here doing this now. And I find it hard to accept that Israel is an exemplar of democracy in any way or form. As long as the West Bank, Gaza Strip remain an integral part of the country of Israel. And as long as all of these people live in these territories, undergo this cutting the lawn, as they call it, um, mass murder and genocide that's going on. I, um, they can't claim a true democracy there either. And I bet nobody remembers it, but the UN Human Rights Committee claimed that Israel was one of the worst violators of women, um, women's rights in the world. They deplored their treatment of Arab women, particularly the Bedouins. 23 countries were represented on the committee and it could 
at worst be described as political, but they certainly would not say that it was an example of anti-Semitism because apparently this word can now only pertain to their agenda uh, to protect Israel from blame of, of any wrongdoing whatsoever even when it comes to Israel now committing a genocide. Okay, that's it for today. Okay, love, I love you all. Bye.